Greetings to my Century Unit Galaxy Kingdom, it's the Central Man here, so this is my review of WWE SummerSlam 2021. The first match to kick off the show, we got the Raw Tag Team Championship match. AJ Styles and Omos, the Raw Tag Team Champions, putting the belts on the line against Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, Team RK Bro. It was an okay match to kick off the pay-per-view, it was a decent, fine match. Um, the baby faces got the moments first, then the heels got the heat back. Uh, AJ and Omos basically being down, wearing down Riddle. Omos, um, he is not terrible in the ring, but at the same time, he isn't perfect. He's not like an Undertaker, because Undertaker has got to be one of the most athletic big men in professional wrestling. He can do what no ordinary big man can do in the ring. You know, the, the suicide dive and the, um, the old school... And, um, yeah, um, Omos, he was fine in the ring, you know, does some big man moves onto Riddle. I'm trying to keep it short and simple. Uh, outside the ring, Riddle pushed Omos into the ring post. AJ trying to roll up Orton for the free count. Orton kicked out. Hit the RKO onto AJ. Pins AJ for the win. Yep, Team RK Bro are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, I'm going to give them time. Like, I give um, Daniel Bryan and Kane time way back in 2012, you know, Team Hell No, and Team Hell No is one of my favorite tag teams in WWE, you know, in re in the modern era. But, um, yeah, I think, like, AJ and Almas, I, I don't know, I think, like, I said, I said it, like, ages ago that the Raw and SmackDown tag team championships, in the both Raw and SmackDown tag team divisions... Um, don't mean shit, you know, it's, um, it's, de it's dead, but, um, I feel that, I don't think they defended on pay-per-view, they, they won the belts at Wrestlemania, uh, in April this year, I don't think they defended it, you know, they didn't defend, defend it at, uh, Wrestlemania Backlash, they didn't defend it at Hell in the Cell, I don't think they defended it Money in the Bank, I haven't saw Money in the Bank, um, uh, might re watch it in the future, and review it in the future, but, um, yeah, I think they defended it once or twice on a roll, but, um, yeah. Um, I think AJ, um, uh, yeah. They're losing the tag team belt is a, basically a blessing in disguise. I think AJ needs to get away from the tag team towel pitcher. He needs to go back to this, as a singles competitor, get away from Omar's, get back in the world towel pitcher. They need to do the Bobby Lashley AJ Styles match, you know. They never fought in TNA, they never fought in WWE. I, I want to see it sooner than later, whether it's in Survivor Series, whether it's WrestleMania or Royal Rumble of next year or SummerSlam next year. I want to see it, you know, because um, that'll be good, you know, both in their mid-40s, you know, they're still in their primes, you know, that'd be good. You know, seeing Bobby Lashley and AJ Styles as a babyface. I mean, AJ's time as a, baby, uh, as a heel, I think it's done, you know, it's very funny that AJ is... He stayed as a heel for two years. He never turned as a he never turned babyface. I think they need to turn AJ back as a babyface and do the um Bobby Lashley AJ Styles match. You know AJ is a babyface, Lashley is the heel. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna give IK Bro some time. Is it gonna be um a successful tag team? Not successful, a good tag team or a bad tag team? Time will tell. So, the next match, we got Eva Marie with Doomdrop. Doomdrop is Piper Nevin versus Alexa Bliss. This was terrible. Actually, it's not really terrible, but this was a comedy match. You had Eva Marie. Let's be honest. She is shit. She is shit. <laughs> she never improved. You know, she just doesn't give a shit about professional wrestling. That's Eva Marie. I don't want to get into it. Um, I did a video on her months ago. Go and check it out. Um, she smacked the doll Lily. Yeah, like, I'm not a big fan of the, um, Alexis Bliss Laters, you know, her recent gimmick. You know, the fans were chanting, uh, Wyatt, you know, because at this moment of the time, Bray Wyatt has been released to WWE, been released from WWE about a few weeks ago. You know, I was a bit pissed off, but, um, yeah, um, I don't want to see Alexa Bliss losing to Eva Marie, uh, one of the worst female wrestlers in professional wrestling. You know, she might be the worst. I think there'd be plenty of worse female wrestlers in the past, but she stick stick out to be the, one of the worst. Anyway, um, um, basically Piper Nevin, or I'm gonna call her Piper Nevin. I, I refuse to call her Doom Drop. That is a stupid name. 
She refused to hell Eva to win this match. Um, Alexa hit the Twist Bliss. Eva got out of the way, trying to pin Alexa. Alexa kicked out. In the end, she hit the um the DDT onto uh, Eva Marie for the win. And afterwards, you got Piper Nevin on the mics, calling you know Eva Marie a loser of this match. Wear her robe, did some pose, basically mocking her. I think they need to break away from Eva and Doom Drop Piper Nevin. Yeah, I, I wish they ditched the Doom Drop name and just call her Piper Nevin. I don't really, I don't really, I heard she's good, you know. I need to watch some NXT UKs. Maybe I might watch some um, indie, uh, her matches in the indies. You know, get more information and sprints about her, you know. You know, she looks like a good wrestler, you know. She she rem she reminds me of Jordan Grace, you know, because Jordan Grace are both heavy wrestlers. You know, people compare her, you know, I think the difference is, like, Jordan Grace, she's m full of muscle. You know, she's got that bit of, like, I don't know if she could be in powerlifting. She looks like she could be in powerlifting. She's got a bit of a powerlifting bod. I don't know about Piper Nevin, but um, that would be that could be a future match one day down the line. You know, Piper Nevin versus Jordan Grace. So, yeah, um, it was just a comedy match. What It's just like, it's nothing else to talk about. It's just a comedy match, you know. Good to see Alexa getting the win. I don't like her gimmick, you know. I think, like, you know, like I said, the fans chant for Wyatt. It say, yeah, we want Wyatt, you know, it's a shame. You know, who knows? Uh, there's major rumors like, you know, Bray Wyatt's going to AEW, but um, I think he's more of a WWE guy than a AEW guy. But um, I did a video on Bray Wyatt getting released. Go and check it out. So let's move on to the next match. That is match number three. We got Sheamus defending the United States title against Damian Priest. This was good. This was fucking good, man. Bit boring, but um, it was a physical match between Sheamus and Damian Priest. Um, basically, Sheamus taunt towards the fans, say uh, you're not worthy to become U.S. champion. Um, uh, Damian Priest basically hit like a roundhouse kick. Off the top rope onto Sheamus. Sheamus kicked out. Sheamus hit like a um, Alabama slam. And then he hit. He was going for like the bro kick. But it's more like a running knee onto Damian Priest. He also kicked out a lot. N near fours. In the end. Um, I think like. Um, what's his name? Uh, Priest. Sorry. My bad. Um, Priest hit like a one arm power bond onto Sheamus. Another kicked out. Um, in the end. Uh, Priest hit the reckoning onto Sheamus. It's basically. The Reckoning is a similar to the Crossroads, you know, Cody Rhodes' finisher. Um, yeah, uh, Priest pin Sheamus to win this match and become the new United States Champion. I call it in my predictions video. I think it's the right call. I think Sheamus' run as the US Champion is very mediocre. On paper, I want to see Sheamus, you know, as the US Champion doing well. But instead, I think he defend. He didn't barely defend on pay-per-view. I think he defended on... Pre-shows, but not on the main show. It's a bit disappointed, but um, yeah, uh, Damian Priest as the U.S. champion, you know, because I think it's been like slow ever since he got uh called up to the main roster. He lost to Miz and Morrison. He had a feud with Miz and Morrison, you know, teaming up with Bad Bunny at WrestleMania. And then he had a a, a, a multi-month feud with Sheamus. I think that could be the blow off. They probably have one more match on a Raw, and then all of a sudden, I think you need. I think he needs a break away from Sheamus. Uh, Sheamus, at this moment in time, I think I think they miss you, Sheamus, man. I think he's a good worker. To see him, like, he made his return in, like, in 2019. He ended up losing. Couldn't, yeah, he won the United States title. Never caught fire. I don't know. What's next for Sheamus? You know, they'll probably have one more match, and then what's next? I don't know. So, I think Sheamus needs to go back as a babyface. I think his time as a heel is done. You got, I like Sheamus... You know, you know, his paper face run in 20, you know, 2011, 2012. I, you know, I think it was fun, you know, being the anti-hero still, you know, I like that. You know, people don't like that. Not, not all people, but some people. But I, for me, I kind of like Sheamus as a paper face in, you know, in those years in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. Yeah, 2013, 2014, they were stale. He was a paper face a little bit in, you know, uh, in the... You know, uh, the spring of 2017 before, you know, they turned heel, you know, you know, he was teaming up with Cesaro, you know, the bar, formed the bar. So anyway, I'm rumbling too much, so let's move on to the next match. That's match number four, I think. Match number four, we got the SmackDown Tag Team Tile match. Before that, 
there were skips on the show. You got Rick Boggs. I think that's Eric Buheiger. I think that's his name. You know, I watch his videos on YouTube. He does like the powerlifting stuff, you know, bench pressing and squatting and deadlifting. It might be not him, but he looks like him. You know, he's playing his guitar. You got Shinsuke Nakamura, who is the Intercontinental Champion. Um, he defeats uh, Apollo Crews on an episode of SmackDown. I said to myself, why could they say that at SummerSlam? I hate that. I hate WWE. Do you know throwing pay-per-view quality matches on free TV? They're just doing it to pop a rain. Save it towards the pay-per-view. That's just me. Anyway, and also you got like Miz and Morrison later on the show. Um, you know, producing water, and then you got like Xavier Woods dressing like Scott Hall. You know, he's wearing, you know, he's straightening his hair, bit of the curl, you know, the hairstyle, Scott Hall wearing the Wolfpack um, t shirts, spraying Miz and Morrison with the water. Why they why they did that on pay per view? Why could just save it on TV? Because sometimes, you know, doing like segments uh, in pay per views doesn't work. You know, people bitch and complain about. You know, like, the anti-smarts that go, Oh, where's the where's the segments? You know, it's a pay-per-view, dumbasses. You know, you're not going to get a lot of segments in pay-per-views because segments and pay-per-views don't work. Save it on t television. Anyway, so, get back to the SmackDown Tag Team Tile match. So, we got the Usos defending the belts against the Mysterios. This was a good match. This is similar to the opening match between AJ Omos versus Team RK Bro, Riddle, and Orton. It was an okay match. The baby faces got the heat first, and then the heels got the heat, you know, wearing down Dominic Mysterio. I thought, like, they could win. You know, you had Ray hit uh, Jimmy Uso with a 619. He was going for, like, the splash at the top rope, but uh, uh, Jimmy Uso got his knees at the last minute. They did, like, a double super kick onto Ray, hit the Uso splash onto Ray's back for the win. Try to keep it short and simple, guys. Um, so, yeah, it was an okay match. You know, fans were into it. For me, it was an okay match. Like, those two tag team title matches on the show, they're not terrible matches, but at the same time, they're not, like, four stars classic. It was just more, like, between... You know, for the star rating, I'd give it, like, between two or three and a half stars. I'd probably give it three and a half stars for me. So, that was the first half of the show. The second half of the show took a nosedive. <laughs> took a proper nosedive, you know. We thought... The ritual match, it was supposed well, probably... Is the fifth match was disappointing. I thought we were going to get um, the WrestleMania rematch between Bianca Blair and Sasha Banks. Unfortunately, I heard reports that Sasha Banks is unable to uh, clear for this match. You know, and instead, um, we got, yeah, Carmella. And the fans were trying bullshit because I don't want to see that. No disrespect with Mella. I think Carmella can improve, but nah, no. I don't want to see her, like, seeing Bianca versus Carmella. Yeah, yeah, I heard that uh, Sasha Banks was unable to you know, be clear to prepare for this match on the show. Unfortunately, yeah, Bianca says, you know, you know, I'm gonna, you know, take my fr frustration on you, and it's a shame, you know. I, yeah, the fans chant bullshit. It's just what the hell, you, you know. That could be a good match, but instead, we got the return of Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch basically came out. It's the first time we see. Uh, we haven't saw Becky Lynch. I think it was the Raw after Money in the Bank. Um, basically, um, you know, came down to the ring, beat down Mella, basically threw him out of the ring, challenged Bianca Blair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bianca accepts. We thought we we're going to have, you know, a really a 15 minute match between, really a dream match between Bianca Blair versus um, Becky Lynch. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, Becky kind of cheat shot uh, Bianca, hit her with a forearm shot to the face, hit the manplex, and pins her. I, I go, what the fuck? What they did? I'm not going to shout, but um, yeah, Becky Lynch uh, become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. And they did dirty on Bianca, man. You know, what's the point in having her winning the Rumble in January of this year, won the title WrestleMania, and give her a short run? A short run. A short reign as the SmackDown Women's Champion because she won the title at um, WrestleMania in April. She had oh, two matches against Bailey in May. I think it was late April. You know that's WrestleMania Backlash um, and Hell in the Cell. I don't know who. I don't know who she fought at uh, Money in the Bank. 
I don't want to get into it because I haven't sold the show. So that's uh, that's June. So five months. You know, what's the point? You know, I think they did dirty on Be uh, on Bianca. As for Becky Lynch, good run. You know, good return. You know, she got a good um, pop. But seeing her winning the title, I can see Bianca getting the title back. But too soon. Why could they just done like... I don't mind Becky lost on the show. I'll be fine because... You know, they might do the rematch down the middle, but, um, yeah, it's disappointed because people want to see Bianca and, um, yeah, Bianca and Sasha. You know, if they imagine if Carmella won this ma match and won the title on the show, that will be Nuka reaction because that is typical Fence, you know, Fence's blonde shell, you know. I think Fence has a problem with black wrestlers over the years, you know. You know, for Becky, she's a ginger, but um, the, the, I think she's going to end up being the John Cena, Roman Reigns, you know, shift down people's throats. I think she's been put, being ruined by the machine, you know, turn her a fucking heel, for fuck's sakes, you know. You know, it reminds me of Roman, you know, when he defeated The Fiend last year, he thought it's going to be the typical Roman Reigns, you know, the, you know, doing the whole belief that, you know, the baby face Roman Reigns, shift down people's throats, but instead... Turn, he turn heel, and she become, he becomes the top heel in the company. You might do it with Becky, but, um, yes. That's bullshit, man, so. So, yeah, like I said, the, the second half, like, took a nosedive. The next match we got, that's match number five. Match number six, we got Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal. Via and Shanky are banned from ringside because, basically, they cost Drew McIntyre the money in the bank ladder match last month, so... This was one-sided, you know, you know, uh, Jinder, you know, has some offense. In the end, uh, McIntyre hit the, I think it's the Future Shock, hit the Claymore for the win, and afterwards you got, like, V and Shanky, you know, Jinder's heffies, body, like, their lackeys, came down to the ring, uh, Drew trying to hit um, uh, V and Shanky with the sword. Yeah, I don't get it with the sword. It's a stereotypical shit, you know. You know, you know, for Drew McIntyre, I understand she's Scot. I don't understand he's Scottish. Yeah, it looks cool. You know, I like the outfit. You know, wearing the kilt, but the sword? What the fuck? Um. So moving on to match number seven. Match number seven. This was a good one. Um, we got a triple threat match for the Raw Women's Championship. We got Nikki A S H defending the belt against Shark Flair and Rhea Ripley. Um, this was good. Fucking good. Um, you can call it, it's a debatable, this has got to be match of the night, or second best match of the night on the show. Um, people, but like, three women bu bump their asses, man. They bust their ass and bump their ass at the same time. Like, um, like, they did a lot, a lot of, like, double com combat tag team moves. I know it's not a tag team match or a handicap match. Like, they did, like, a, like, a double move combo of each other. Uh, Charlotte hit the moonsault onto both Nikki I'm gonna call her Nikki Cross. This Nikki A S H. Come on, man. I I don't like that. You know, I'm gonna call her Nikki Cross. Nikki hit like a move off the top rope. Um, Charlotte hit the moonsault onto both Nikki and Rhea outside the ring, very close in the barricade. I thought she's gonna in injure her neck. Um, but she lives. Um, yeah, like Rhea. Every time like Rhea trying to hit uh, Nikki with the rip tie, Nikki counted it. Kinda, I kind of like that. Um, she locked in. Yeah, she. Yeah, real trying to lock in the Texas Cloverleaf on both Nikki and Charlotte. Why I don't know why they call it the Texas Cloverleaf because for once, you know, Rhea's not from Texas; she's Australian. I don't want to get into it. So, um, Charlotte locked in the figure eight leg lock onto Rhea. I thought she's gonna tap out. Similar, you know, she tapped out with that same hold at uh, WrestleMania last year. Uh, Nikki hit the crossbody. Onto uh Charlotte, onto uh yeah onto Charlotte um and then Charlotte locked in the uh the figure for a figure four or figure eight leg locks I'm gonna call it the figure four you know it's her version of the figure four leg lock onto um onto Nikki Cross Nikki tapped out and Charlotte became a I don't know how many times she won the belts I don't know 14, 15, I don't know lost count so Charlotte's the new Raw Women's Champion I call it I call it it's a damn shame. You know, Nikki's your know, reign was pretty short because she won the the money in the bank briefcase. I think the next night Raw won the title. I don't like her gimmick. A lot of people say she got some cheers, but I think it's just a rip off. You know, of, of Mighty Molly. Like I said, I can't compare Nikki Cross to Molly Holly because they're two wrestlers from two different eras. But um, 
yeah, uh, you know, it's not really Charlotte's fault. It's just basically WWE going back to the past, you know. It just reminds her to Ric Flair. I understand she's Ric Flair's daughter, but... Uh, I think she's breaking away from the Queen, her dad's gimmick, because, what, because, you know, her dad, Rick, left the company. I think she's, I think he's now in AEW, I think, like, managing Andrade, that'd be good, because, because Charlotte and Andrade are a, a couple now, you know, you know, it's, that's good. You know, I see, you know, YouTube video, you know, Andrade and Charlotte working out, you know, you know, they're not on bad terms, they're still... Together, I don't know if they're married or not. It's just whatever. But um, yeah, it's a damn shame for uh, Nikki Cross, Nikki, uh, A H S or whatever her name is. Yeah, the superhero gimmick is a bust. Rhea Ripley, I don't know. You know, I rather had Rhea winning the belt, but it's just what it is. It's so predictable at this moment in time. You know, they just like want her break a dance record. It's gonna like that. That'll be maybe the end of the year, maybe next year or the year after that. We don't know. So that was match number six, no seven. So moving on to match of the uh, match number eight. Sorry, I almost say match of the night. It could be match of the night. Uh, match number eight. We got Edge versus Seth Rollins. Trying to keep it short, simple. Match was good. Um, you had basically Rollins working working up the neck of Edge. Um, like I think the one more of the match. Uh, he's trying to hit Edge with the curse dump, but Edge got out of the way. Kind of like throwing um, Rollins into the ring post. He did uh, Biggie Langston's spear off the top rope or middle rope. That was scary. Um, Edge, you know, like, he basically hit, hit Rollins with a swigging neck breaker off the top rope. He hit, um, I think he hit like the Edge Matic. No, not Edge Matic. The educate, the execution. And the uh, the Glam Slam basically paying tribute to his wife uh, Beth Phoenix. Ron's kicked out. He hit like a I think it was a suplex and a Falcon Arrow combo. That was cool. I'm um, trying to keep it short and simple. By the way, I think uh, Ron's kicked out of the spear. Edge locked in the was it the Education? It's called. It's basically Edge's version of the Sharpshooter. Rollins trying to get out of the hole, but I think Edge, I think Edge basically turned it into the crossface. And then he kind of slammed Ron's face into the ring mat. He, he uh, locked in the hole. Ron's tapped out. Edge got the victory. He got his revenge, you know, because because Ron's caused Edge the universal title match against Roman Reigns last month at Money in the Bank. So I think Edge could be in, back in the title picture. Because, yeah, um, I think Edge is staying for a long time. He's full-time. He's not part-time. He's a full-time, you know. He's, I think all these years, you know... The neck injury cost nine years off his career. I think he's gonna stay there. I think he's gonna have one. More. I think he's gonna end his career in WWE, and then he'll probably retire. Um, you know, he's got left in the tank. I think he's gonna. I think his next target is the world title. You know, the universal title because he's not gonna face Lashley. That'd be a, a dream match, but that's not gonna happen. So, so moving on to yep, match number nine. Uh, match no match number nine. We got. Bobby Lashley defended the WWE Championship against Bill Goldberg. Fans were booing Goldberg. Once again, trying to keep it short and simple. Um, yeah, it was, it, yeah, basically Goldberg pulled off Lashley off the top rope. It hit uh, Lashley with the spear outside of the ring. MVP hit Goldberg in the leg with his cane. And he's let, you know, he's selling the knee injury. And then, and then the referee just called it a stoppage. And Lashley retains the title. Afterwards, he beat down Goldberg more, injured, injured his leg, you know, hitting him with the um, with the um, with the chair. And then you got Goldberg's son Gage trying to get in the ring. Lashley locked um, yeah, Gage with the hurt lock. Lashley, not Lashley, MVP broke, uh, trying to break break the hold. Lashley MVP out of the ring. So I'm guessing, yep, that's a rematch. I don't want to see that. Uh, La uh, yeah, Lashley versus Goldberg two. You know, Goldberg wants revenge on Lashley for attacking. You know, Lashley attack he attack his son. Maybe it's next month or the pay per view after that. I don't know. It's it's gonna be down the road. I want to get into it. So let's move on to the main event. Main event time. We got Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman in his corner. Defended the Universal Championship against John Cena. 
Cena came out wearing a black t-shirt with a Super Mario version of him at the front. And then there's LED boards of when he won the 16-time World Championships, you know, dates he won those world titles, you know, WWEs and world titles between 2005 until 2017. He hasn't won the world title ever since. Anyway, this match between Reigns and Cena is similar to their previous match at No Mercy in 2017. Reigns basically beat down Cena, taunting towards the fans, saying like, you came here to see me. And then he was pointing out the camera says, sorry, movie executive Hollywood, I'm going to whoop your boy's ass. Don't bring him back because I'm WWE now. I kind of like his character, Roman Reigns, of right now. It's way better than when he was a babyface because we didn't see that personality and charisma when he was the babyface before, you know, he was the tribal chief. I don't want to get into it, you know, it's like believe that, you know, sucker, sucker in sucker tass, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, you know, calling these fucking, you know, lame jokes. Um, anyway, so, Cena kicked out multiple Superman punches, Cena hit not once, not twice, but three fucking AAs, you know, once in the ring, another one, you know, put Reigns through the announce table, it hit Reigns with a super A off the top rope. Reigns kick out all three or eight A's. You know, it's expanding the uh, the kick outs, you know, the finishes. Um, I think Cena kicked out the spear by Roman Reigns. Um, um, I think, uh, yeah, Reigns trying to lock in the guillotine onto Cena. Cena basically powered out, you know. I think it, it powered out to transform into the uh, the second AA or the third AA, you know, there's too many fucking kickouts, man, it's just not believable, it's just similar to the previous match at No Mercy at two, in 2017, sorry, a bit of a taunt to the moment, but it's kind of, it's, it's, it's similar to that match, um, in the end, Reigns hit the spear onto Cena again to win this match and retain the Universal title, before that, before, you know, that the previous match between Edge and Seth Rollins, Edge came out, you know, with the Brood theme music, you know, with the Rings of Fire and the sunglasses. It's a missed opportunity. If uh, if Christian didn't went to AEW, we could see a, like a cameo appearance of Christian and Gangrel. You know, you know, it's like it's a sh you know shades of the Attitude Era. You know, you know the the Brood. Go and look up the Brood. You know, very underrated faction in my opinion. You know, that's Edge, Christian, Gangrel. Fucking hell, that they were part of the Ministry of Darkness in those. Uh, you know, those late 90s Attitude Era. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Reigns, um, I'm talking about the main event, you know, uh, you know, after the main event, you got the, the second return of the night. We got the return of Brock Lesnar. Lesnar, we haven't saw Lesnar since WrestleMania last year when he defeats, uh, when he lo lo dropped the title to Drew McIntyre. I almost say defeat Drew McIntyre. No, he lost to Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. He kind of confront Roman Reigns and then Reigns back out. Um, I thought it's going to lead up to a fight. And basically, Paul Heyman is, you know, he is power, he was like paranoid, you know. It's like, oh my god, because, because he's the former advocate of Brock Lesnar. This, you know, I was like, I knew that Lesnar could come back because he should have come back to face Bobby Lashley uh, on this show. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, he came out with a beard and a ponytail. I saw, like, a recent image of Brock Lesnar with that look. We haven't saw Brock Lesnar with a beard since well, when he, the days when he was in the UFC. I think he grew a beard a little bit in, you know, in the 2018-2019 in the 2018, look. You know, he shaved it off, but um, he never grew a full-length beard since, you know, when he's competing in the UFC. And then, I think when the... The show was off air. I saw. The, uh, by the way, subscribe to Graham G S Matthews. You know he does a lot of wrestling content. He does like, reviews a lot of Marvel uh, content, like me. Uh, Lesnar hits Cena with the F five. I'm guessing the next match, the uh, next opponent for Roman Reigns is Brock Lesnar. You know, I thought um, I had the mixed signals. You know, I don't want to see that because I've already seen it uh, because they fought at um, WrestleMania thirty one in twenty fifteen. WrestleMania 34 in 2018, SummerSlam 2018, um, I think, no, he didn't, he didn't fight to uh, Hell in the Cell, it was leading up to a triple threat match at uh, Crown Jewels of the same year, unfortunately, you know, Lesnar, not Lesnar, Reigns, basically suffered, uh, I think he diagnosed with cancer, so yeah, um, 
yeah, it's a damn shame. But you know, because at the time Reigns was a babyface, but like move it, you know, the times change. I want to see that match. You know, Reigns as a heel, Lesnar. I think at this moment in time is a babyface. Um, I think at this moment in time, I think Lesnar is breaking away from Paul Heyman because I don't like the the partnership between Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. I think it's okay in two thousand two, but in recent years, you know, you see Lesnar standing, not talking, not interacting, it's a bit disappointed. Yeah, Heyman is a mouth speech, but at the same time, Lesnar does speech sometimes, but not a lot. I think we could see that Brock Lesnar from 2002, 2003, you know, like he's interacting kind of promo. I know he's not good on current promos, but at least he's interacting. If it's Alex Rumble's next month, here's my booking. I want to see Heyman turn on Lesnar, you know, basically, you know, spray Lesnar in the face with Mace and could, I don't want to see a lengthy root feud. I want to see just basically helping Reigns win this match and then Lesnar could ride up towards the sunset. Because Lesnar's not going to come back as a full-time wrestler. He's a part-timer. I don't want to get into it. So, anyway. So, my final rating for SummerSlam 2021. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. This was a fun SummerSlam. It's a tale of two mix. The first half was good. And the second half was, you know, the main event was, all, it was a decent main event. Nothing much, uh, you know. I'm gonna get you know. It was, uh, actually, the Cena Reigns match. I'm gonna give it an okay. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an okay. Put it in the okay. But yeah, like, in the okay has to be the two Titan Tower matches, and um, yeah, C uh, Reigns versus Cena for the Universal you know, Title. Besides that, um, in the bad we got the um, Eva Marie versus Alexa Bliss match. Um, boy, the Bianca Blair. Becky Lynch match, which is a short match. It's basically Baron Bianca and Bobby Lashley, Goldberg. That was shit. But besides that, there's some good. Like Sheamus, Damian Priest for the United States title. The returns of Becky Lynch and Brock Lesnar. The triple threat um, Raw Women's Tile match between Nikki, uh, Charlotte Flair and Rhea. That was fun to watch. Seth Rollins versus Edge match was good. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I give it 7 out of 10. It's a fun SummerSlam match to watch. People say it's... I see people complain about the show is shit. I don't think it's shit. Yeah, and yeah, the, and the skits with Rick, yeah, Rick Boggs and Nakamura and the stuff with Miz, Morrison and Xavier Woods. It's just a skits, you know. It was better off on TV, not on a pay-per-view that people spend a lot of money, so... Anyway, hope you enjoyed my review of SummerSlam 2021. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Smash the like button. Click the like. Subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube for more wrestling videos and more. And be part of the Central Unit today. And this is the Central Man officially signing out. Check you later.